<laughs> how LeBron was after Bronny got drafted. I just want to say thank you to the Lakers organization for taking the chance on me. It means the world to me. But I'm here to work. I got a chip on my shoulder and I got something. He here to work. He here to work. You heard that, D-Lo? So, D-Lo, this is what we're going to do for the first 10 games. Bronny going to start. And when we go, we go, no, no, what you mean? What, what? I don't want to take his spot. Let me let me earn no, it. No, no, he cool with it. He cool with it. D-Lo, me, we didn't already talk about it. You know, let, me, let me earn my spot on the court. They're not going to take me seriously. No, you earned your spot. What you mean? No, you earned your spot. Man, you I seen you hoop every day. No, I'm not starting. Let me let me let me work. To, let me work. You starting? There. I'm you not starting. starting. You starting? I'm not going back and forth with you. I I brought you into this world. You starting? Now get back to your damn. Dang, home. bro, that's gonna be tough, actually, bro. Imagine like, what do you what do you do in this scenario, my guy? Cause I'm trying to make that D when you pick a kill with my son. He's talking. He's talking. Oh, by the way, JJ, I haven't gotten to talk to you yet. Since that, yeah, what? On Twitter? Uh, oh no, no, LeBron. You know I would never, never say that. I, I just want to say how grateful I am for you hiring oh, me as head coach, though. I appreciate. You. I hired you to know head coach. What's yeah. That was wrong. No, after the podcast, you said you're gonna hire me. No, that was wrong. That was wrong. Uh oh. The, JJ, that was wrong. That, that was wrong. 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 Um, so, I, I guess I am starting now. Sorry, d -Lo. But treat me no different. Treat me no different. Same for you, Dad. Treat me no different. Of course not, sir. Yell at me like you yell at them. No, I'm not yelling at nobody. What you <laughs> I do not, yes, you do. I do not yell at nobody. <laughs> and also, I know you're my father, and I love and appreciate everything that you did. But in this locker room and on the court, I'm calling you LeBron. No, you're not. I'm calling you LeBron. No, you're not. I'm calling no, you LeBron. No, you know what, your son, this is your moment. I love you, son. You do whatever you do, man. What's up, about Rock? What's he going to say? Dad, pass? Dad, pass me the ball. <laughs> Dad, I'm open. <laughs> Dad, go for the oop. <laughs> bro, imagine, bro. I, yo. Oh, they don't take me serious, Dad. What, they do take you serious? No, they don't. Who? Who say the name? Who, who don't take you serious? Like, who say the name? Say the name. Who? What's Dilo? Who? Dilo? No. Who's Dilo? Dilo didn't do it. Dilo! I haven't even talked to Dilo. Oh. Who was it? Just tell me the officer. No, no, it's okay. No, it's fine. I'll call you that on the court. You. No. Come on now. We're here for Bonnie. Well, in one second, real quick. Now, I just want to say real quick this is the team that can beat the Nuggets. For sure. This is the team that can beat the Nuggets. We got my son starting point guard, uh, D-Lo, coming off the bench. Uh, we got two, two coming off the bench. white shooters. Y'all already know what that is. That's straps. You know what I'm saying? And we got JJ, one of the top coaches here. Don't know what that was. We got JJ. He gonna, he gonna, do, he gonna do his thing. He know what he's doing. Even though he ain't got much experience in the coaching, trust me. He know what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just clap it up for Bonnie. Bro, I feel the awkwardness, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I feel it. Like, it's just like, damn. Dad passed me the ball. Dad was open. Dad. Yikes. Like, ew. Like, ew. I kind of want to watch this one, too. My dream has always just been... Bronny, is, Bronny James is officially trapped. To put my name out, make a name for myself. And of course, you know, get to the NBA, which is. I wonder if he actually messed with basketball like that, bro. I mean, if he didn't, he wouldn't do it. Maybe possibly. I don't know. You would think, right? What if he actually like secretly hates basketball? Everyone's end goal is. If you don't want to be known for being LeBron's son and just like an appendage of LeBron going wherever LeBron goes, then you'd go to any team that drafts you, right? He would not be spoken about in the way Bronny James is, good or bad because his father is not LeBron. That's the reason he is getting the opportunities that he has, because of his connection. He will get drafted. He will get drafted probably in the second round because of his last name, yes. Um, not very long. Damn. Not very long. Um, I'm on the other side, obviously at a hill, so uh, I'm not gonna play another 20 years. That's a damn shame, but uh, not very long. Who do you wanna play? Bronny is number one on my fucking list. That's dope. He's number one on my list that I want to play with for sure. Bronny James is the most polarizing college player in years, but more importantly, he's the most mysterious prospect of all time. How could we know so little about a kid who's been under the microscope since he was in sixth grade? Type Bronny shit. has been intentionally hidden from the public eye. That's no secret. We didn't see him on social media until he turned 14, and really, we still don't. 
Sure, we're treated to the occasional TikTok dance or Aiden Ross cameo, but fast forward and the most hyped prospect of the 2024 draft has only done one interview. What are his strengths, his personality, his true height? What's his work ethic his like? True height. Ultimately, who is Bronny James? Is he his own man or his is he living out his father's fairy tale? For starters, his parents named him LeBron James Jr. This quickly became a problem that even LeBron acknowledged. I still regret giving my 14-year-old my name because of that. It's, the only thing I could do is give them the blueprint, and it's up to them to take their own course whenever that time happens. Notice how LeBron no. doesn't refer to his only son, who's named after him, by his real name or his nickname. The battle for separation was on early for these two, but LeBron consistently muddied the waters. On one hand, he talked about the unreasonable amount of pressure he put in his son by naming him LeBron James Jr. But on the other, he publicly stated how his new dream was for his son to make the NBA and join yeah, his team. Yeah, that was kind of a tough angle. Like, all, all rip, you just like sucking, like y'all, like he like bringing him to be attached with you. Which, I mean, he's your, like, he is your son, so he's always going to be attached. But like, damn, you know what I'm saying, Broski? Now you can't say like, James, you can't say Brian without saying like, you know what I'm saying, Broski, what the fuck? Quick note before we move on here, the NBA well, is not like the NFL or MLB. There are only 350 of these guys, and it's an international pool of talent. It's a league of 6'10 freaks who move like they're 5'10. Your father yeah. expecting you to make the NBA is crazy enough, but playing crazy, the same team as him, playing? that's a level of pressure that even LeVar Ball couldn't cook up. As a kid, <laughs> Bronny seemed genuinely interested in becoming his own man. The earliest memory basketball fans have with him is 2015, when he refused to wear his father's number. He, quote, didn't want people to know who his father was. Kind of hard when your name is LeBron James Jr., but yeah, the intentions right? are clear and respectable. LeBron seemed like a proud dad in response. He told Complex, Bronny hates when they ask him for pictures and autographs. He won't even wear my number. The shadow bothered Bronny, and who can really blame him? It's not a pretty picture for sons of NBA legends. Michael Jordan's two sons both played college basketball. The oldest, Jeffrey, played five years and averaged 1.3 points, one assist, and less than a rebound per game. Marcus had a slightly better career, but also fell short of the league. You probably know him better for dating Scottie Pippen's ex-wife Larsa, which tells you all you really need to know. Brawny's I Am Brawny, Not what? LeBron campaign never really stopped, but we never heard it directly from him. What? Despite the James family being un- Jordan's son dated Pippen's ex-wife? That's a crazy family dynamic. That's a great, that's a, that's crazy. Doubtedly the biggest family in sports, Bronny was a mystery. Sure, he played ball and skyrocketed up the rankings, but something was way out of tune. Never before in the history of basketball coverage had the ratio of articles, blogs, and videos created to actual first-hand sourcing been so misaligned. Everyone was, and still is, discussing Bronny without knowing Bronny. The James family is no stranger to the media. They wanted to have their cake and eat it too here. They wanted oh, Bronny shit. to get all the hype, but they also wanted to force the media to the side. There's only really one way this mangled relationship can end. Widespread speculation and resentment, and that's exactly what happened. People who have never heard Bronny James speak resent him. It's sad and unfortunate, but that's what happens when your family shrouds you in mystery. We never got to know the most interesting oh, well. child star of his generation. We could watch his AAU highlights for days, but we never heard him say a word. I mean this literally. Most of us had no clue what he sounded like until he did his combine interview. Rational basketball fans figured this would change with Bronny arriving at USC. Surely the most hype prospect in the country who just made national headlines committing to a prestigious university would have at least a few remarks or thoughts. We were wrong. It was silence from Bronny's end. And impossibly, that continued through the season. He never spoke to the media, not even before or after nationally televised games. Not one post-game presser, not a podcast, an interview, nothing. Labeling That's this as extremely strange is an understatement for a player of Bronny's caliber. Bronny oh, questioning and flirting with Corinna was the closest look we got. I want you to pay extra attention here because while it seems silly, Corinna actually says how we all feel. Bronny. <laughs> Up, are you? How are you? I'm scared my butt's gonna come up. <laughs> oh, no. Why are you looking at him like that? He's like tall now and like the voice is deep and stuff. You've never met him. Yes, I have. Boy. I've met him. As trivial as that conversation is, it's kind of perfect in symbolizing Bronny's what mystique. You mean? Corinna, like the rest of us, doesn't know Bronny. She might know of him or have mutual friends, but she feels like she knows him. She's even surprised to hear his voice. Now up to this point, the mystery of Bronny and the tug of war between him and his father had been strange, definitely, but nothing that serious had gone down. That changed July 24, 2023. Bronny collapsed in the middle of a workout at USC and was rushed to the hospital. He suffered cardiac arrest. Fortunately, he was going to recover, but his basketball career was in jeopardy. There was complete silence. 
No one from the family spoke on Bronny's health anywhere. In fact, the only information given to the media was a statement from a LeBron James Family Foundation rep. It read, quote, it is an anatomically and functionally significant congenital heart defect, which can be treated. We are very confident in Bronny's full recovery and return to basketball in the very near future. Thankfully, the statement proved to be true as Bronny was medically cleared to return after missing the first part of the USC season. Now, maybe due to his recovery or because he was an undersized young guard in a new league, Bronny failed to deliver at USC. He averaged just 4.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 2.1 assists per game on dreadful shooting splits. It is hard to sugarcoat just how forgettable his USC career was. In a down year for the Trojans, Bronny could hardly crack the rotation. For any other That's player in the world, declaring for the NBA draft with this resume would have been laughable, but LeBron turned up the heat. Rumors quickly spread that Bronny was considering transferring to Duquesne to play for LeBron's high school teammate, Drew Joyce. LeBron was stuck. What was more important to him? Did he really want to just give his kids the blueprint and let them forge their own paths? Or was he dead set in achieving his own dream of sharing the floor with his son? Ask anyone who really knows basketball and they'll tell you the obvious move for a kid in Bronny's position would have been returning to college for at least another year. LeBron had other ideas, namely his behind the scenes tactical weapon in Rich Paul who knows exactly how to manipulate the draft. Paul is crafty and moves in silence, but this time he couldn't do it in complete silence. Finally, the time arrived for Bronny to give a real interview, and one of the reporters actually asked him about this very topic. What went into the decision not to talk this season or, or do any interviews? Was that your call or who, who's? You know, this is my team. Stuff like that is, you know, made decisions for me that would, would be best in that situation, current situation. When you say your team, <clears throat> what do you mean there? You know, just like my agency and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, PR train, what was PR the train. What? I can tell you, I, I'm just going off with it. Right. It's all. The agency piece is key here. Clutch Sports is owned by Paul, who also is a close friend of LeBron's. He's become famous for an unorthodox style of meeting his clients' demands. He's the perfect man for this job because mm -hmm. the demands are twofold and extremely unorthodox. Number one, get a player who on paper does not meet G League qualifications drafted into the NBA. Number two, get him to the Lakers and make it look organic. Yo! Ronnie ended the draft combine ranked 98. What? What? A sharp decline from his top 10 ranking heading into college. Again, for any other prospect, 98 is career suicide. There's only 58 right. picks in the draft. However, Bronny was impressive in the combine workouts and managed to catapult himself to 54th. Conveniently, that's one spot before the Lakers, who sit at 55th. So much of what's transpiring seems so transparent, it's insulting. You have a situation where Bronnie James good, uh, is projected as, in the the as ranked 98 on, on, on the talent pool. He goes to the NBA uh, combine, Molly, mm -hmm. and it drops 44 slots to 54. And the Lakers have the 55th pick in the second round. I mean, but really? You can't LeBron and Paul are up. veterans of the game. Publicly, they'll state Bronny and his father have let go of the idea of playing with each other, but is anyone really buying it? The nah. actions don't match the words, and it goes deeper than the combine workouts. Paul's next move was a bold one. He stated Bronny would absolutely not sign a two-way contract. Essentially, this means he's not willing to be a player who gets called up and down between the G League and NBA. These deals are significantly less valuable. Two-way players can play in max 50 NBA games and are barred from competing in the playoffs. Now, it's commonplace for a second rounder to sign a two-way deal. It's often beneficial long-term. They get yeah, more right. playing time in the G League. This goes without saying, but more often, it's a take it or leave it type of negotiation. Not with Paul though. He's intentionally limiting Bronny's options here. Typically, the next move for a guy in Bronny's position is private workouts. Again, all very normal, unless you're named after LeBron. Second rounders will take any meetings they're offered. This is a rare chance for teams to get to know you on and off the court, but the mystery continues with Bronny. This was the exact moment it became impossible for the James family to play both sides. I thought the turning point may have been when he measured three inches shorter than his listed height of six foot the combine, crazy, but it wasn't. It was the private workouts. Bronny had a choice to make, live out his own dream or live out his father's. It was finally time to choose. Here's the first route. If he genuinely didn't want to be known as LeBron's son, he'd work out and play for any team that drafted him. Maybe it meant going undrafted. Doesn't matter. This is the grind every other player endures. Bronny went with Route 2 and it alienated him from 90% of basketball fans. It's hard to make the argument that you sympathize with a kid who's going out of his way to turn down opportunities. His potential identity as his own man evaporated as his father effectively gave him a free ticket into the league. This was LeBron's dream in full force and there's video proof. 
Somebody named Fred Taylor Jr., Channing Crowder Jr., Ryan Clark Jr. would not be afforded that opportunity. He would not be spoken about in the way Bronny James is, good or bad, because his father is not LeBron. That's the reason he is getting the opportunities that he has, because of his connection, connection to his father, connection to the most powerful agent in basketball because of his father. As the NBA draft approaches, the spotlight on Bronny James only intensifies. The moment the Lakers draft him, America will see right through it. The resentment will grow 10 times stronger because Americans don't root for the favorite. We root for the underdog, and that's not the route Bronny chose. His story remains unresolved, but it's barreling down the scope of a cautionary tale, one that illustrates the pitfalls of fame and privilege. Bronny's trapped himself in a cycle of manipulation and exploitation, with all roads leading back to his father, but again, nobody really knows him. He's dug himself a hole, but as far as I know, we still don't paint pictures in the box score. The only thing America loves more than an underdog is a winner. Moving I forward, should. nobody will care how well Bronny's doing with FaZe Clan or Instagram. He doesn't have to become an all-star to win, but he does need to prove to the world he belongs in the NBA. Becoming a meaningful, reliable, and skilled rotational player would suffice. It's a hefty goal for a guy who stands 6-1 amongst a league of freaks, but if he can make it happen, he can write his own story. Tiny shit, bro. As well as I said, the only thing I can say with LeBron, LeBron, Bronny now, LeBron James Jr., the only thing I can say now is just balling out, broski. You know what I'm saying, broski? You got to ball out now. You know what I'm saying? You got to ball out now, bro. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking like prime Westbrook numbers. You know what I'm saying, broski? You know what I'm saying? You gotta give me triple double, triple double, triple double, broski. And as an undersized guard, bro, like bum book lad, it's not looking, it's not looking good, brev. It's not looking good, brev, bro. It's not looking good, bruv.